They often say in sport, you win some and you learn some. And it was the latter for RCB today against a very, very strong Punjab side. You're watching cricket.com and you're, we're going to be reviewing this match with Dirk Nanis. Don't go anywhere. It's a dagger in my heart, ladies and gentlemen, because look, RCB, well, the first innings, it was almost done and dusted, but then who would have thought Punjab coming out making a win, a statement, saying to the rest of the team, saying, you know what, we're not just here to make up the numbers, perhaps even lift the first ever title in IPL 2022. Dirk Nanis, I know it's not good for you in terms of predictions once again, none from two, but what a game of cricket. Let's stop there. Well, let's start with your shirt. I noticed that you've changed out of your RCB shirt since the game. It's uh, yeah, just I mean, a little look, change, but I've noticed it. Yeah, I mean, red-shirted, red-faced as well. But let's make no mistake about it. Where did RCB lose that game? There was that drop catch, there were extras. I'm scratching my head still. Uh, it's hard to fathom, really. Yeah, 205 on the board, that's, that's plenty. Um, but as we've seen in the other games so far, the, the bowling is just off. Um, you know, the lack of being able to defend uh, is really a problem at the moment of being able to execute and hit the right spot at the right time. I, I don't think necessarily tactically they were too far off. I think the field placements were all okay. Just the execution with the ball was poor. Um, you know, drop catches here and there, yeah, they, they do hurt. but. But more broadly than that, I think it was just just um, poor execution with the ball where they were bowling just step hit balls that, that allowed batsmen to plant the ball over the fence. Um, let's not take too much away from, from um, the Punjab Kings. I thought they, they batted really well. They put away bad balls excellently. Uh, Odeon Smith, after going for 52 with the ball, came back and, and had a blistering 25 of eight balls and just smash them to all parts yeah you know, there were some really good positives in the Punjab king side but i don't think they should have been allowed to get that close right so let's just of course pay attention to the mat summary before we move on further because look it was field day if you were a batsman and if you were in the divai Padal stadium well you got your money's worth because there were plenty of sixes and boundaries and they all play their part in that chase punjab kind of bad beautifully like dirk just reiterated over there dirk my first question to you let's just go chronologically because rcb they were what 57 for one in their first nine overs and then they kind of got upon uh, playing catch-up cricket. Do you think they could have been more, perhaps, showing more intent with the bat in that first power play especially? Maybe they could have, but I, I don't think he can take too much away from, from the opening bowling uh, of Punjab. They were swinging the ball massively. I was really excited to watch, particularly uh, Ashdeep was swinging the ball a mile early I'm not, and he wasn't particularly accurate with it but that was uh, you know pretty hard to come out and try and counter that straight away and try and be really aggressive and keep your wicket so i, I wasn't too fussed with that uh, at one stage uh, faf was i think he was 17 off 25 or something something in that order and then scored 39 off his next 11 balls um that was a pretty massive change in momentum and, and you know it, you can't really get to 205 and look back and say, oh, I think we left a few out there because 205 should win all the time. Um, but I, I also think Mayank got it right by winning the toss and choosing to bowl first because it did seem to be a little bit easier later on at night. So um, you know, Faf and, and Virat put on a fantastic knock and then um, DK coming in late and just... Um, being able to go from ball one is something that's really valued. That's the, the type of role that you'd normally expect out of a Maxwell, but this time it was um, out of Dinesh Kartik. So in retrospect, was 205 par for the score? Or was it, what, 10 runs shot? W was that the case? I reckon it was pretty high. I thought yeah. it was a pretty good score. <laughs> Isn't it? Look, uh, unless you're playing a Chinaswami, a score <laughs> over 200 should win you a game of credit. Um, you know, the, here you are in, in what were pretty good conditions. It wasn't a tiny postcard of a ground like a, a Chinnaswami. So 205 should you win you the game. Always, yeah, particularly I mean, with their bowling attack. Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was just going to go talk about matchups because that's often spoken about in D20 cricket. 
At that moment in time with Odin Smith and Shah Rukh Khan, now we all know that they thrive against pace. Could Faf taking a gamble with Shahbaz Emma, the left arm spinner, and probably saying, you know what, go for it if you really have to? Sorry, I missed that last part. Oh, uh, in terms of in terms of Shahbaz Emma kind of coming in on in that particular dying embers of the game, do you think they could have taken a gamble there, or do you think that would have just been beyond belief? I, I don't reckon you could take a gamble. Um, you, you need to go and trust your, you know, the the players that you pick for a certain position. You've got to go and trust them, particularly in your first game. Um, so I don't, I don't think, again, I don't think tactically these teams played it wrong tonight. I, I just think it was it was a mistake in the execution or, or, or missed execution rather than a tactical blunder. I, I don't think we can criticise either team for doing that. Okay, uh, we talk about this Punjab chase. They all played their part. Who impressed you the most? Because Mayan played his part. Davan, Raj Baksa, of course, was brilliant. And not to forget the final flourish from Shah Rukh Khan and Odin Smith. Which one did you enjoy the most? Uh, for me, Roger Pasca played a, a surprising role. Um, at times, he, he's, he's kind of a weird one to watch because he never kind of gets himself in really good positions when he plays his shots. That he, he, it looks like he plinks them, like he doesn't really nail the ball, but they're going 10 rows back over the fence and you can't work out why. Um, so he's a really sort of interesting player to watch go about his work. Um, and you know, so for me, that was quite surprising. Um, and then to see Odie and Smith come in late, we know what Mayank can do, we know what Shika Darwin can do. Um, Livingston stay was brief, but we know he can play them over the fence as well. But Roger Pasca, just in the way that he was sort of, didn't seem to be hitting the ball true, but the balls are still going over the fence, that was a surprise. And Odie and Smith, just to polish it off, was fantastic. Right, and it's of course uh, a welcoming time for Faf as captain because now he knows how it feels to be an RCB captain with all the health and skelter going around him. Do you think he missed a trick or two, especially in the power play? Maybe probably Hasaranga throwing the ball earlier or do you think, you know, in hindsight, there's always ifs and buts? I think there's always ifs and buts. I, I don't think the power play was where this game was won and lost for either team. Um, I think it was, it was won and lost a little bit later. Um, the spin was okay, but um, Siraj going 59, you don't expect that. Yeah. He bowled nine dot balls, which means that fifteen for 15 balls, he went for 59 runs. That's quite remarkable. He is getting smashed around the park, and he's not getting hit for ones and twos like you would want a bowler to get hit for. He's getting planted over the fence, and that's, that's a big problem. Um, you know, and, and that's just an execution thing. Again, we come back to the, the lengths that they were bowling and you can't set fields for that when they do it. So I don't think tactically we can pin anything on Faf. I thought he captained pretty well. I thought he batted outstandingly. I thought he took direction really well. There were a lot of times where he would take direction from DK or also speak with Virat. So I don't think we can pin much on on. The, the captaincy, I think it's all on the bowlers for mine. All right, final one for me then. All the other teams will definitely be watching that or they'll wake up and watch the highlights however they like. And if they be looking at this Punjab team and if you were in the opposition, how would you kind of assess this chase? Because they've, like I said, made a serious statement today. But it's, it's an outstanding statement. Um, and to think also that, you know, they've got players that are, still to come in. I've got Bearstow to come in. I, I, um, I don't think yet they're a force necessarily. Uh, I love Ashdeep with the ball. Um, I thought Shah was excellent with the ball. So too was um, uh, Humphrey Barr. I thought he was excellent. I, I still think there are question marks around the bowling, but um, I, I think it really shows that you've got to nail it with the ball in the power play and try and take those two wickets early. Um, you know, either get Shika or get Mayank and then start working through the middle order. Otherwise, it's going to be a big total. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's all about execution. I think that's just the way it's going to be for the first part of this tournament. Yeah, it's delight for Punjab Kings, dejection for CB. And well, you know what they say, new season, but same old story for the Royal Challengers Bangalore. Hopefully, it's 
a win the next time they're around, at least from my perspective and all the fans watching from Bangalore. Dirk Nannis, it's been brilliant to, of course, pick your mind. Unfortunately for you, you've not uh, ended up on the right side of the prediction, but it's fine. It's still fun chatting and picking your brains. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us. Looking forward to it.